In this video, we will look at limiting and excess reagents. This is to help you fulfill the learning objective of being able to determine the limiting reagent for a reaction and the reactants that are in excess. Before we look at a chemical example, let's look at a more practical example, making burritos. So let's imagine that you have a burrito recipe to make one burrito where you combine one tortilla, three tablespoons of salsa, and four ounces of beans. If I write this out as a chemical reaction, I would have something like one tortilla plus three tablespoons of salsa and four ounces of beans as my reactant, and they're forming the burrito as the product. So now let's assume we have five tortillas, 18 tablespoons of salsa, and 16 ounces of beans. Which of these ingredients is going to limit the number of burritos we can make? In order to answer this question, we need to figure out how many burritos we could make from each of the ingredients. So first of all, let's look at the tortillas. If I have five tortillas, I can make five burritos. Basically, I need one tortilla for every burrito. So that's my one-to-one -one conversion here. If I have 18 tablespoons of salsa, I can make six burritos because I need three tablespoons of salsa for every one burrito. And from the 16 ounces of beans, I can make four burritos because there are four ounces of beans for every one burrito. The one that limits the number of burritos we can make is the, is the amount of beans. In this case, the beans are a limiting reagent. They limit how many burritos we can make. Therefore, the other reagents or ingredients are said to be in excess. Now let's look at a more chemical example. Here we have the simple reaction of methane reacting with oxygen to form CO2 and water. The first step is always to check that your reaction is balanced, which this one is, and then we can assess a limiting reagent given some amount of starting materials. So in this case, we're told we have five molecules of methane and eight molecules of O2. Which of these is going to limit the amount of products we can form? And really, we can look at either of the products. So I'm going to go ahead and choose CO2 in this case, but I could also look at how much water is being formed. So from five methane molecules, I can make five CO2 molecules. I have my ratio of reactants to products, and I use that to determine how much of the final product I can form. For the oxygen, I need two oxygen atoms for every one molecule of CO2. And so if I evaluate that, I see that I can only form four molecules of CO2 if I have eight molecules of oxygen. Therefore, the oxygen is going to be the limiting reagent or limiting reactant. Those terms are used interchangeably. And that's because it's the one that forms the least amount of product. Therefore, the methane in this case is what would be in excess. So in general, the limiting reactant or reagent is what determines the amount of product you can form. Any reagent that is left over after the reaction would be an excess reagent. In this example, we have hydrogen and oxygen in flasks and they're being combined into one flask. When they're combined and allowed to react, they can form water molecules. In this case, I allow them to react. Which reagent is fully used up and which one is left over? In the final product, there's no hydrogen left over. There's only water molecules, which are shown here, and oxygen molecules, which are the red ones here. The fact that we have leftover oxygen means the oxygen was our excess reagent. Hydrogen here would be the limiting reagent. And the amount of product that can be formed is determined by the hydrogen. So before we finish this section, let's go ahead and look at another example problem. All right, before we end today, let's look at another example. In this example, we have ammonia and oxygen combining to form nitrogen oxide and water. The first step is that we need to balance this, equa this chemical equation. So if I start looking 
at my substances here, I have one nitrogen on each side, but then I have three hydrogens on the reactant side and only two on the product side. So I would need to multiply both sides to get a constant number of hydrogens on each side. And now when I go to check my nitrogens, I actually have two of them. So I have to have two NO compounds as well. And finally, I check the oxygen. I have two on the reactant side and five on the product side, which means I would need five halves on the reactant side. So five halves times two gives me five, but I don't actually want to end up with fractions. So I would multiply everything through by two, which gives me four ammonia plus five O2 to form four NO and six water. So now I have a balanced chemical equation. This allows me to relate numbers of molecules to each other in terms of the reactants and the products, but the information I'm actually given in the problem is mass. So I need to figure out how much of the products I can form given the amount of reactants. So I want to start with what I'm given, which is 3.25 grams of ammonia. But in order to relate that to the amount of product form, I actually need a way of counting it. So I need to know either the number of molecules or the number of moles before that I can use the ratios in the chemical equation to convert. So I'm starting with 3.25 grams of ammonia, and then I'm going to multiply that by the molar mass. And I need grams on bottom so that that cancels. And the molar mass of ammonia is 17.04 grams per mole of NH3. Now I can relate the number of moles of NH3 to the number of moles of product I form, in this case NO. And there's going to be four moles of NH3 to four moles of NO. If I go ahead and calculate this out, I find that I can form 0 0.191 moles of NO. And I'm keeping three significant figures here because that's what I had in my starting material. Now, I can do the same sort of calculation with the mass of oxygen that I'm given. So if I have 3.5 grams of oxygen, I need to multiply that by its molar mass. And one oxygen atom is 16 grams per mole. So two oxygen atoms is going to be 32 grams for one mole of O2. And then I have, for my chemical equation, five moles of O2 for one mole for four moles of NO, and that would give me a total of 0 0.0875 moles of NO. So the limiting reactant is the one that forms the least amount of product. In this case, it's going to be the oxygen. The amount of nitrogen oxide that's formed is going to result from the limiting reactant, but you'll notice it was asked for in grams. So I actually need to convert the moles of NO to grams of NO. And so now I'm going to have moles on the bottom, and I'm going to multiply that by the mass of nitrogen plus oxygen, which is 14 plus 16, or 30 grams. And when I calculate that, I end up with 2.6 grams, or 2.62 grams of NO. But I only had two significant figures in my original mass, so I should only end up with two significant figures in my product. And so I'm just going to write that I have 2.6 grams of NO. The final question here requires a little bit of thought. It asks, which is the excess reagent? That part's easy to answer. It's not at O2, so it's going to be the NH3. But the second part, which is how much is left over after the reaction is complete, is what we have to think about. So if we're forming 0 0.0875 moles of NO, I want to know how many grams of NH3 is required to make that amount. So I need to go from moles of NO to moles of NH3, which again is 4 over 4. And then I'm going to convert from moles of NH3 back to grams. So again, I'm going to use this molar mass, but I'm going to flip it over. So the grams will be on top and the moles are on bottom. And if I go ahead and solve this, I end up with 1.49 
grams of NH3. And so this is the amount that's required to fully react with the available oxygen. That means that the amount left over is going to be the amount we started with minus the amount that was used up. So I would have 3.25 grams of NH3 and I'm using 1.491 1 grams of that, which means I should end up with 1.76 grams left over. So for this last part of the problem, I needed to determine how much of the ammonia was used to completely react with the limiting reagent. And then the amount left over is the difference in what we started with versus what was used up. So whenever you have an excess reagent, you'll always have some amount left over. And that's what we calculated here. So this is basically the same problem that I just went through. Now take a few minutes and work through this one on your own and see if you can answer the same questions. Which is the limiting reagent? How much carbon dioxide is formed? And which is the excess reagent? And how much of that excess reagent is left over at the end of the reaction?